Hello everyone, today we are going to cover the scan command of the dauphr v3. With that command you're able to search passively for Wi-Fi devices around you, so not just access points, but client devices too. If you haven't seen our last video where we show you how to install the Hunitor, be sure to check that out first, as the dauphr v3 is serial command line only and the Hunitor is our serial monitor of choice. I will be using our Andromeda board, which you can get at spacehoon.com, but you are free to use any ESP8266 dev board that is flashed with the v3 firmware. But now let's just get right into it. So you can see I have Hunitor open here already. I'm just going to connect to my Andromeda board. And first off, we're going to type help scan, because that will give us an overview of how the scan command looks like and the arguments it takes. So first, a bit of basics on how to read this. Everything in square brackets is optional. So you can see that all the arguments for the scan command are actually optional. So if you don't declare any of these arguments, they will default to their yeah, default values. And the values are in those pointy brackets. And the dash is the argument name. And the little slash in between, that's a fancy way of telling you, hey, you can write the argument name in two different ways. You can either type dash m or you can type dash mode, but without the slash in between, of course. So it's kind of like a divider. Um, so you can either write this in a more readable way or you can write it in a shorter way. And then you declare the value. Um, the second line tells you a bit about what the command actually does. And then you have another explanation of each argument individually. So let's go through the arguments one by one. So dash M or dash mode is the scan mode. So basically what types of devices you're looking for. Uh, you can either look at access points, that's AP, you can look at stations, that's ST, or you can look at both. Access points are networks, so routers, for example. And stations are client devices, so that would be maybe your phone that's connected to your home network. And yeah, of course you can scan for both, and that's also the default. Important to know here is that an access point scan only takes two or three seconds. A station scan can be longer, as long as you like, actually. The longer you scan, the more devices you might be able to find. And that's because stations are only discovered when they are actively sending packets, so when we are able to see packets from that device. Now, that's also true for access points, but access points send packets constantly because they want to advertise themselves. So they are visible to anyone around. So that makes finding access points easy and stations sometimes tricky because not always are we seeing packets sent from these devices. And another thing to keep in mind is that stations might be moving around because someone might have their phone in the pocket and just passing by, but access points are usually stationary. They are at a fixed location. Okay, the next argument is dash t or dash time, and that's the scan time for the mentioned station scan. So how long do you want to look for stations? As I said, an access point scan only takes two or three seconds. A station scan, you have to declare how long that is going to take. Um, the default is 20 seconds. That would You write that as 20s, but you can also write something like 1m30s for one and a half minutes dash ch or dash channel defines what Wi-Fi channels you're scanning on. By default, it will look at all 14 channels, but that also means it will channel hop a lot. Channel hopping means that the device will look at one channel at a time for a certain period and then go to the next. And so the more channels we declare, the more we risk missing packets, just because we are hopping from channel to channel to channel and of course, we are missing what is going on on the other channels. So the more channels we declare here, the more it will hop. And it makes sense that if you look at channel six, for example, you can't see what's going on at channel one. It can't see all the channels in parallel. Um, it can only see one at a time. And so if you want better scan results, then you can declare um, specific channels here. The most common ones are 1, 6 and 11. Dash CT is the channel time and that's the mentioned time period you stay on each individual channel. 
when you're doing channel hopping. By default, it's 284 milliseconds. Usually you won't need to change that, but you have the option to experiment here. For example, you could set it to one second or maybe 100 milliseconds um, to see if it improves the scan results. And the last thing is dash R or dash retain. And this is simply for declaring whether or not you want to override the previous scan results. So the last argument is dash R or dash retain. And that's basically um, to declare whether or not you want to keep the previous scan results. By default, it will not. So it will override the previous scan results, but you are free to declare that no, please keep the old scan results and then the new scan results will be merged. And so you will have a larger list of networks that you found. Okay, now let's go through some examples. First, I'm going to start a scan with just default parameters. And if I'm doing that, I won't even need to declare any arguments whatsoever and just type scan and press enter. Okay, it's done. Now let's go through it step by step. So first we can see that it started in access point scan. It will also tell us the argument for the channels. It also tells us that we can stop the scan if we want. And then it tells us that it's finished. And then we have our access point scan results. So let's go through it column by column. First, we can see that each scan result is given a ID and that is super useful when we want to use these scan results in combination with other commands. But that's not important for this video. Um, it is more useful for, for example, when you're running a text or something like that, then you can easily select access points through the ID. Um, then we see the SSID and that's basically the network name you can give a Wi-Fi network. And you can see that it's all in quotes and that's because it should be visible through the terminal uh, whether or not there is a space in the name somewhere or maybe an unprintable character. So that's why they are in quotes. Then we have the RSSI, that's the Received Signal Strength Indicator. And basically the larger the number here, the closer we are to that network or at least the better the reception to that network. And one thing to keep in mind is that bigger means smaller because we are in the negative here. Minus 43 is better than minus 90 because minus 43 is a bigger number. Just something to keep in mind. Then we have mode. That's basically the mode the network is operating in. So whether or not it's an open network or it uses encryption here, all my three scan results are encrypted. However, one is using a combination of WPA1 and WPA2 and the other two networks are just WPA2. Then we have channel um, and yeah, that's basically the channel the network is operating on. So you can see they're all on three different channels, which makes sense because they don't want to overlap. Next, we have the BSSID, which stands for Basic Service Set Identifier. And in other fancy words, it's the MAC address of that access point. And you can see it's hidden here. That's because I have the demo mode on because I don't want all the information leaked here. But the interesting thing about the MAC address is that it's meant to be a unique identifier. So these IDs are useful to distinguish between multiple devices that might even use the same SSID, which is the case in mesh networks, for example. Also interesting is that the first three bytes of the MAC address are used to declare the vendor of that device. So the, the manufacturer of that device, not always is it the manufacturer of the entire device. And sometimes it's just the manufacturer of the Wi-Fi chip. Um, but still it can tell you something about the device. For example, we see that the first device is not in our vendor database, at least not in the database that's in the D of a V3 firmware, but we could um, copy the first three bytes if the last one wasn't hidden and search uh, online. There are plenty of databases you can uh, look this up on. Um, it's, but you can see the other network is from TP-Link and uh, yeah. You can also see some of the stuff also explained very shortly below uh, our table. And that's it for the access point scan. Let's head over to the station scan. All right, so I actually scrolled down here to the bottom um, because the scan results will be printed twice. Um, actually, the access point results are printed twice here as well. But my point is, um, first, it will print them um, basically live. So you get a live output whenever there's a new device um, that has been found using the station scan. 
But uh, once the station scan is done, you will see the full scan results again. Um, this time you don't see the parameters in which the scan was uh, run, but just the results themselves. So we are going to look at the final station scan results here basically because the live output is uh, basically the same just without the IDs and maybe with wrong packet number. But all of that aside, let's just go through the station scan results column by column again. First we have a ID again that's useful for using the station scan results in combination with other commands. Um, the next column are the packets, so the number of packets we found during the scan. And we can see here that one device um, we saw significantly more often being active than another one. So that's already like an interesting sign. Um, but anyway, moving on. Then we have the RSSI, so the signal strength again. Um, yeah, same thing as before, it's minus 86 here is closer than minus 91. So uh, the first device might be closer to us or at least has better reception. Next we have the vendor, which plays a more important role in the station scan results here because the stations don't really have a name, you know, the access points have a SSID, um, but stations don't. They are basically only identified using the MAC address. Um, but the MAC address allows us to see or to look up in our database what vendor is this device from. And so we see here our first device we found is from Samsung and that I mean alone tells us a lot. Interesting also the second device is from unknown vendor. Hmm. I don't know what's going on there but uh, could always be that this MAC address is just not in our database. Um, talking about MAC addresses, that's the next column. Um, yeah, again, unique address um, plays also a more important role in the station scan results because that's our only identifier to distinguish between devices. Um, then we have access point SSID and access point BSSID. Now that's if we find a station that's connected to a network. And here we see that the first device we found um, is actually connected to an access point we know of. So that's why the SSID is listed here again and also it's BSSID. The BSSID is listed here again too because maybe there could be multiple networks with the same SSID. That's again the case when we have mesh networks um, but basically we can see the network this device is connected to. Uh, you see the second device uh, is not connected to anything, so also interesting. We saw one packet from a device we don't know the vendor of and this device is not connected to anything. Um, and then the last column is probe requests. Now probe requests are a type of packet client devices send out to actively search or look for networks they know. So in this case, we know that um, the second device here, it knows of the network space box and has probably been connected to it before. It, it has it saved in its known networks. So uh, what it does is it asks, hey, is this network uh, with this name around here? And an access point would reply, uh, if it's in range and has the same name, it would reply, yes, I'm here. And then they can establish a connection. And probe requests are super interesting because it tells us which networks are known to which devices. So here we know that there is a device nearby that knows of Spacebox, is apparently not connected yet. Maybe it's out of range for the access point, but still in range for us to receive that. Um, it appears that the only packet we saw from that device is also only that probe request. And now that leads me to believe that this device maybe isn't um, a device at all. Maybe it's actually the same as the first one um, or another device that we don't see because we don't have a vendor here. And that could be a good indicator that this is Mac randomization um, being active here. So it makes it harder to track those devices. If a station is connected to a network, they will use their real MAC address. So I'm safe to assume that the first MAC address or the MAC address of the first device here is the real MAC address. But it could be that the second device here is using a random MAC address because it's not connected and it's sending probe requests. And probe requests are the type of packets they like to uh, use random MAC addresses on. 
Um, and that would also explain why we don't see a vendor. So all of that is super interesting. We can use that knowledge for other attacks, but this is a bit much um, for this video. Okay, before we continue with other examples, a quick word from our sponsor. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm using our Andromeda board right now. And it's gorgeous looking PCB is actually manufactured by our sponsor, JLC PCB. They have fast turnaround time, good quality and stunningly low prices. Just $2 for 5 PCBs at 10 by 10 centimeters. The order process is simple and fast. You have plenty of options and you can also easily panelize your board or include a solder stencil, for example. JLC PCB also offers a SMT assembly service, which I hope to cover in a future video, so be sure to subscribe. But if you're interested, go to jlcpcb.com or even better, use the link in the video description to let them know we sent you. Okay, back to scanning. Another scenario might be that maybe you want to listen in more closely on a certain network and see who is connected. For that, we can simply run another scan, um, but only look for stations on that channel we are interested in. From our previous scan results, I saw one network that I'm interested in particularly. It's the first one and it's on channel 10. So that's why I'm choosing channel 10 to look for stations. So for that I'm typing scan-mst, that will put it into station scanning mode. Um, then I'm choosing to scan on channel 10. And let's say I'm scanning for two minutes here. So as we can see, there's one device here and actually it shouldn't find any other device because this is my test setup and I only have one device connected to this uh, Wi-Fi network. And here you can also see the live output uh, of the station scan. So we see that it found 18 packets, but by the end this scan is finished, we might see more packets. Um, just initially it found 18 apparently, and it hasn't assigned an ID for that scan result yet. Another thing to note here is that you can see in the top, um, there's actually no channel time here. It would use or default to the uh, 284 milliseconds per channel. But since we only scan on one channel, there's no need for any channel time anyway, because it's only looking at that. There's no need to hop between channels. Oh, and here we have the results. So again, we see the access points printed as well as the final station scan results. And we can see it only found that one device. But uh, as you can see, we found significantly more packets than initially. We found actually 4,122 packets, which is a lot. Um, my test setup here, I just uh, loaded Twitter and clicked refresh a bunch of times, but 4,000 packets, that's a lot. There's probably a lot going on in the background as well. Uh, we also see that the signal strength is higher now, so we are closer to the device. Um, it's unable to find a vendor, um, possibly because it's a very new device and it's not in our database. Um, but we can assume it's a real MAC address because it is connected to a Wi-Fi network and apparently it has not sent any probe requests, probably because it is connected. But look, this is a device we didn't see in our initial scan, even though it was also active when we were doing that. Uh, possibly this is the device that sent the probe request earlier, um, but I'm not sure about that. Um, but yeah, this is interesting. Um, by the way, another way to see the scan results again is by just typing results. And now you can see the current um, yeah, scan results. Even after the scan is finished and you maybe have run other commands or whatever, you can always type results and see um, both the access point and stations uh, from the last scan. You can also type results ST and only see the station scan results. And by the way, if you're wondering how I clean the uh, output here, I just type clear and then fresh terminal without anything disturbing my view. Okay, moving on. Um, another scenario might be that you're walking around looking for specific access points and so you want to scan for new access points quickly because you know, you're walking around, you're constantly um, finding new access points and for that you can simply type scan-map. That way it will only scan for access points and the access point scan is really quick. So why don't we just run that? 
Okay, we are done and wow, we only found one network this time. Now, why don't we run another scan? Also just looking for access points because we wanna be quick here. And I'm gonna declare to retain the previous scan results. So I'm looking for new access points, adding them to the list, but not um, deleting or overriding the previous scan results. There we have it. Look, 24 networks. <laughs> What a surprise. Yeah, I actually connected a proper antenna to my Andromeda board and that's why uh, this is the case. But uh, you know, we can just continue that and run another scan and see we found 26 networks. So we can do this uh, again and again and again. Eventually the device might um, crash because it's running out of RAM and the DOFA v3 is still kind of in development. So um, stability issues might be a problem here, but technically we can run these scans again and again and again, and just build up our list of networks. And isn't that crazy? I think that's super cool. Look, 26 networks, we can probably scan um, and find a bunch of stations now uh, with so many networks in range. Okay, and another thing I wanna show you is the results command. I've already shown you, but there's a bit more to it. So let's type help results. And this will give us an overview of the entire results command and the arguments it takes. So the type is what I've used previously already. So that's the um, either you declare access points or stations and then you will see the results only of that types of um, yeah, scan results. You can also um, see both. That's the default. If you just type results, you will see both access points and stations. Um, but we can also filter by channels, SSID, BSSID or vendor names. Vendor names is super cool because in the list above, I can see a bunch of vendors multiple times. So why don't I use uh, results AP um, dash vendor and then, uh, and then I'm declaring the vendor name. And now I can see all networks um, that probably run on the same router, to be honest, or the same model of a router. But yeah, this is a cool way to filter the scan results, especially if you have a lot of them. Um, for station scans, this might be also interesting um, because you might want to filter for certain vendors. So for example, filter for, I don't know, Apple devices, you know, um, stuff like that. And the last thing I want to show you for this video, because I think it's already long enough, is the start command. Now the start command could be an entire video on its own. Um, however, I'm just going to show you the part that's relevant for scanning. So if you type start, it's basically a Q&A step-by-step command builder. It says, good morning, friend. It always says, good morning, friend, even if it's not morning. For the, the offer, it's always morning. Um, and then you can declare what type of command you want to run. So in our case, that's scan. And if we want to escape this Q&A, we can also type stop. Uh, and then we're back to the normal command line where we can type whatever we want. And I'm doing that so I can show you that you can also directly type start scan and it will directly, yeah, basically skip the first question and jump directly into the Q&A for scanning. And yeah, now it goes through the arguments of the scan command step by step. So first it's going to ask us, what do we want to scan for? Let's say we want to scan for stations. Next, it asks us for how long? Let's say 10 seconds. Then which channel? So interesting is that it also gives us an example what we could use. Uh, it also tells us the default. And by the way, if we want to use the default, we can also just press enter. And then how long should we stay on each channel? That's also a good default value. I'm just going to keep that. Should we keep the previous scan results? No. And then it will run the scan for us. Now, the cool thing is that when you're done, uh, it tells you, first of all, that it's done. And then it prints the command that it built for you. So you can actually copy this and use it again in the future if you maybe want to save that. What's also cool is that it will only ask you questions that are relevant. So for example, if I start scan and I declare that I only want to scan for access points, it will only ask us if we want to override the previous scan results, yes or no, yes. It won't ask us any other questions because they're irrelevant for a 
access point scan. So that's a super user friendly way. Um, you won't have to remember all the arguments. You can always just type start and it will guide you through it. Now, of course, knowing the arguments is always faster, but uh, it's always good to have a uh, user friendly way. That's the way that's a get started with the start command. Now that's it for this video. I think this was long enough, but I went into all of the details I could think of when it comes to the scan command and I hope this explains everything. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna type chicken and leave you with that.